So what is this idea behind the local indicators of spatial association, the principle behind ALISA? First of all, we have to step back and uh, go back to some of the ideas we discussed last time when we looked at local uh, versus global spatial autocorrelation. So global spatial autocorrelation we refer to as clustering because it's about the whole pattern. One number summarizes the pattern versus clusters are about specific locations that are special. And as we saw last time, Global spatial autocorrelation measures like Moran Xi or Geary C do not suggest the location of the clusters. They only suggest that the null hypothesis of spatial randomness can be rejected. So to know where these clusters are then, we need to develop specific methods for what is called cluster detection. And there's two aspects to this. Um, one is obviously the identification of the location, where are these clusters, but also the assessment of the significance. And the latter turns out to be quite complex because of problems of multiple comparisons. And you're all familiar with the idea from your basic stats class that if you test long enough, ultimately you find something that is significant. But in fact, you're fooling yourself because the p-value every time you do a new test the p-value is actually no longer what you think it is, but it's much higher. So if you think you're reject rejecting a null hypothesis with a p-value of 0.05 after four other tests, it's actually not 0.05, but it's more like 0.20 or something like that. Then the other thing to remember that there's many, many cluster detection methods, some applying to point data, some applying to regional data, We'll only focus on, on a couple of the main ones, uh, primarily extensions of the notion of spatial autocorrelation and then the scan statistics that I mentioned in the introduction. So more precisely, a lo local indicators of spatial association, or LISA, are two things. One, there's a local spatial statistic, as the name implies, which means we have a statistic for each location. And then we'll have to figure out how these statistics are significant or not. The second aspect is more of a technical aspect, but it's, it's really interesting in the sense that it makes the connection between local statistics and a global statistic. And the connection is that the sum of the local statistics, the sum of the LISA, is somehow proportional to a corresponding global statistic. And as we'll see, uh, in a few minutes, for example, the local Moran statistics are connected to the global Moran statistic in that the latter is the average of the local Moran statistics. And so this is the kind of connection between global and local that we can then use to tease out potential structural instabilities in the global statistic, which we saw last time when we looked, for example, at the lowest fit through the Moran scatter plot. So in local spatial autocorrelation analysis, we need to, as I mentioned, of course, construct a statistic for each location, but then we need to assess the significance of that statistic at each location. And then once we've assessed the significance, then we can infer using the significant local statistics, where are the location of the spatial clusters. These are areas that are similar to their neighbors, so either they're hot spots or cold spots, and spatial outliers. Those are areas that are very dissimilar from their neighbors. And in both cases, we can make these statements with a given level of significance because we have assessed the significance of the local statistic. And so, um, that significance, as I mentioned, suffers from multiple comparison. It also suffers from a potential effect of the existence of global spatial autocorrelation. So the significance can be found in the absence of global spatial autocorrelation. So you can have situations where you run a global Moran's eye and you do not find 
enough significant evidence of spatial autocorrelation. But if you run the local tests, you find small subsets in the data where the um, local statistic is significant. So the one does not preclude the other. Uh, in, in the presence of global spatial association or spatial autocorrelation, you're very likely to find uh, local statistics that are significant as well. So then, in general, before we get to specific statistics, we can state that a LISA form of a global statistic is every global statistic that is decomposable in, in the following sense. If the global statistic is some scaling factor, here I call it A, times the sum over all observations I of a measure, a statistic, computed for location I. So the global statistic is made by summing values at each location. Then the local statistic is that value at a location. So more formally, if the global statistic is a scalar A times the sum over I of a component at I, then the local statistic would be that component at location I. So next we move into the local Moran, which is a, a specific application of this principle.